Seth. Well, welcome back to the Pastor Pod. We are so glad you're with us. Episode 59, Jay. Here we are. Almost to 60. Yeah, 60. We can start. Uh, no, it's not 63. You can start drawing unemployment or no, I'm not unemployment. Uh, Social Security. <laughs> what, what, what is that? Unemployment. Yeah, Social Security. Yeah. <laughs> you can stop working and do also security maybe i don't know now we're that's almost right. 60 that's great uh yeah. there is yeah that's a lot of episodes that's good a lot of good stuff if you're new with us hey it's a great time to jump in we're uh, coming up on christmas here in a few weeks and i'm here with if you don't know my co-host the great and wonderful jay mudd uh, who lives God. in the orlando area <laughs> that's right nobody knows where i actually live but Josh, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see that Josh is uh, looking like he's in paradise right now. Uh, yeah, well, I'm on the back nice. porch. He's yeah, on I'm, his back I'm porch. Working on back porch today. Our, uh, we had some internet issues this week in the office, so we've been all kind of trying to figure out hot spots and uh, waiting for the internet to be fixed. You don't realize how much you rely on it just to communicate. Oh. You know, just for normal yeah. emails and phone. You know, even even some of the phone. Uh, services that we use are are sometimes internet based, so it's it's a, it's crazy how reliant we are on you know, internet. My, my wife actually said, you know, the hurricanes that came through, we didn't get near anything near what you guys got there. But she actually told me, she said, in all the hurricanes, she would much rather lose electricity than internet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> There's something uh, about that, right? Obviously, one know. draw one draws on the other. You can't have internet without electricity, <laughs> but still. Um, yeah. the state of Florida just has horrible cell phone signal. So I don't know what it is. I can't get cell phone signal anywhere. This is a rant I've been on for months since I've moved back to the state of Florida, but somebody needs to fix this problem. I don't know who I'll vote for him for governor. I don't know. <laughs> fix the problem when it comes to the internet, because there's no, you can't use a hotspot because the internet signal is not good. I, yeah, I don't know that what happened to me this morning. That happened to me today. I have a hotspot with unlimited da data. And then, of course, I only have one bar. So it doesn't work. <laughs> who, 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 who to use? I don't know. Everybody's all over, you know, Verizon, AT&T. None of Nobody has good signal. It just doesn't exist in the state of Florida. And I don't understand why, to be honest. Um, it's the sunshine state. It's not like clouds are messing this up. It's not like the weather. Come on. What's the deal? <laughs> so a rant if you know how to fix that email us at the pastor pod at gmail.com and we want to go to the bat for this uh no i'm joking but really uh i don't know internet is crazy so and speaking of crazy uh josh today we just wanted to kind of um i was gonna say let our hair down but you 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 hold your hair pretty high and tight anyway and i'm usually got a hat on but we want to lay our hair down and kind of just talk through um, embracing the chaos, right? Embracing and finding joy in the chaos of Christmas because I don't know about you, but uh, it's pretty busy, isn't it? Christmas oh, it's is pretty busy. What, whether you work in a church or not, let's just speak on general terms. Yeah. Christmas is a <laughs> right. busy season. It's just busy. It feels it like is. everything goes crazy fast and everybody's got a million things to do and we just don't have enough time in the day. That's what it seems like. Then you add on top of that, the craziness of the church calendar if you're uh, with somebody who attends church is part of a church uh, you know whether it be you're involved in you know putting on the extra services worship gatherings we put on all those things it just turns into stuff on top of stuff on top of stuff i see it in people's faces it's like what else can you yeah. ask of me you want me to come package boxes you want me to come do this you want me to give this you want me to do that how much more can you ask and Josh, it can just be stressful. It can be very, very stressful. Yeah, it's, it's, a full, it's a full season of, of life, and we're trying to fit uh, Christmas parties, Christmas plays, uh, end of school, you know, events. Uh, you have people with specific needs in, in the community. You've got buying gifts, right? Just trying to make sure you're covering uh, everybody in your family, your extended family. Uh, and then it's also just trying to figure out how do you prepare, like, as a pastor for Christmas Eve, for all the Christmas services, all, while also planning for the new year because it'll be here before you know it. So it is an extra a busy season. Uh, I love Christmas season. I love every, a lot a lot about it. Uh, I love this time of the year, but at the same time, it's uh, like the week I've had leading up to, to us having this conversation has has been a very tough week. Uh, a lot of really good things, but a lot of difficult things. And I think that the culture puts us in a mold where we, we might feel like 
we have to do all these things to have this Christmas experience. And so I think that's added pressure that if I don't do X, Y, Z and go to all these events that I'm not going to have this perfect Christmas time. And, uh, and I think many times it turns, it gets chaotic. And by the time Christmas gets here, uh, it's almost like for me, I know it's always like a relief. Um, I'm, I'm almost excited about the day after Christmas. <laughs> so, uh, cause I can kind of just, just rest. Um, and, and I'm trying to carve out time before that time, but, uh, this time of year is crazy. And this, and it's kind of counterintuitive to what actually we should, it's funny. You said I'm waiting, I, you know, it's almost, almost like, and I know your heart behind this but it's almost like the day after Christmas I'm excited for, because it's just like, everything's done. Mm -hmm. but yet we're in advent season which is actually all about anticipation and excitement building up excitement um mm -hmm. to that and so it's almost the complete opposite of that and which is why we want to have just kind of an open conversation just dialogue back and forth about really the, finding joy in the midst of all the chaos of this season because it is a chaotic season uh this is the you know full transparency this is the first christmas in uh, almost a decade where i haven't had a major role as a lead pastor um, in, in the Christmas season. And yet I still find myself busy. I'm, I'm on a teaching rotation. So I teach some, I, I you know, I, I got all those things I'm still doing, but I, I don't have all the carry all the weight, but, um, I did lead through, you know, extra things that we're doing as a church because it is Christmas. And so I took the lead on those things. And so I still added on, I still don't feel like there was a break to it. And, um, there's still this chaos. And so Really, Josh, I guess the answer we, we, we want to try to try to come to a conclusion of before we end the podcast today is how, how do we find the joy? Where's the joy? Mm -hmm. How do we how do we how do we not lose the joy of Christmas when we're in the midst of the chaotic season that in many ways we have created for ourselves? Um, we've created yes. it, whether it be the expectations of the world around us, the expectations of the church that is built on, you know, year after year after year of doing more and more and more and more and more, um, whatever it may be. How do we find, how do we, how do we maybe resist the temptation to uh, just look forward to it all being over and saying, hey, I need to find joy in all of this. How do we do that? So, um, Josh, what are your initial thoughts on that? You got any initial thoughts on uh, that joy and finding that joy in the midst of the chaos? Yeah, let me go back to what I said. You know, I, I said I basically was I sound like a Scrooge. Like I'm ready for Christmas I, to be over. I told and what I mean I told by everybody. That, but I know, but here's know what I mean. Heart. We know your. Oh, heart. you know my heart. But to, just for anyone out there in the <laughs> podcast world, what I mean by that is the the pressure and the anticipation of not only the joy of Christmas and and the being together with family and and the joy of of of, of giving presents and and celebrating the birth of Jesus. I'll, I'll be honest, as a pastor, and you know, we're preparing for three services as well as preparing for the new year. You know, it will be like a day of relief of, okay, we finished, we, 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 we laid it all out on the field. We did our best to love and care for people, share the gospel, point people to him. So that's an aspect that I always look forward to. But I, I do think for me personally, I have to ask, I have to always ask the question, do I need to do this? It, whether it's an event or a meeting, um, do I need to say yes to this? And I think really lately uh the yeses are on the table because there's a lot of christmas parties and meetings that are so important that i that i'm not going to miss and that i look forward to um but on a, on a personal level we have to we've actually been scheduling like family movie nights because most almost every night's taken so we we've been scheduling like we're going to go look at christmas lights one night we're going to spend time as a family doing this because if, if you don't do that I, I at least for us uh, it'll get filled up by someone else's request. So we're, we're with people a lot and we love people, but we also want to take time just to be together and uh, have some fun and laugh and spend time together. One thing our kids do is they read the, the Christmas story every day. The cast has like an advent calendar with candy canes and they wake up in the morning and they read the next piece of the story of Christmas. And so that's one thing that we're doing. And it's so cool because every morning the kids are quoting the scripture and every day it kind of builds right until the end of the end of the Advent season. So for us, I really look forward to that because when I hear them quoting it, it actually resets me in the morning, you know, with all that I have coming up. I'm like, you know what, that's, that's what this is all about. And so I think, I think guarding your schedule and not saying yes to everything, but while also knowing that say yes, as much as you can to let, to love and spend time and build relationships with people. We have an outreach day coming up this Saturday. We've got a lot of extra things that we really value 
But at the same time, you have to ask the question as a leader or as someone in a church that serves, um, are you are you taking time to slow down, spend time with Jesus and just be and just be, you know? Yeah, I think we are by nature, we're pastors. We like to give. We like to serve. We like to uh, we like to pour out um, and we do a little bit of extra pouring out in this season. Uh, I think I piggyback on what you just said. One of the things that is is so, so important is that you make sure you take the time for yourself to remember what we're celebrating, what we're, what we're, what we're remembering, what we're, uh, you know, what season we're in. And uh, that, that takes some extra energy because you're pouring out so much, uh, but you got to remember to fill your cup back up. I love that your kids, I heard you say that your kids are getting candy canes in the morning. And so that's what yeah. I heard you say. I heard you say you're yeah. giving them candy canes in the morning. The uh, little bitty ones. Yeah, they, I think that's what the they're most ex- <laughs> uh, That's what I heard you say. I don't know if anybody else picked up on that, but I heard you say you give your kids candy canes in the morning. Um, it's similar to you. We're, we're doing a Abbott thing. My kids are a little bit older than your kids. Uh, mo- uh, three of them are at least. And then I think I have one your age, one of your age of your son. And then I have a younger one. But what we've done is actually we're, we're doing an Advent devotional together. First time we've done something like this, where it's not just the Christmas, but it's actually an Advent devotional together. What that has done is it's been really cool because uh, the questions that my kids are asking now are different than they were when they were uh, younger. Um, you know, uh, everything from fasting to um, I, we've had some just off the wall conversations, great conversations. Um, and I think that's been super super cool this year um and and so just making sure you protect those things and make a plan I, what you plan for is what you're going to do let's be honest you said you got a calendar of those dates what you plan mm-hmm. for is what you're going to do and i think many times what happens is a failure to plan and that's when we end up in the chaos and the spiral mm-hmm. the, the the out of control chaos is we never we never planned um and, and i like planning uh i'm always not i'm not the, always the greatest at it but i think what we should plan to do we carve off every all year long this is not just a christmas thing we carve off family friday nights like mm-hmm. uh it's it's non-negotiable on friday night you don't make any other plans we don't make any other plans and we're gonna do it now there are rare occasions where that gets mixed up but then it turns into saturday family night we get it we just say mm-hmm. we bump it one night uh, but our family Friday nights have been uh, a tradition in the mud home forever. They used to be Friday night campouts where everybody would sleep on the floor in the living room. But I got too old for that. I'm not sleeping on the floor anymore. <laughs> um, and then it turned out to the kids sleeping on the floor and I would go to bed. And now everybody just goes to bed, but we stay up pretty late. Mm-hmm. Um, and so one good thing about that is that that is something that's marked on the calendar no matter what. We guard it the best we possibly can. And so when Christmas rolls around, we get it. Uh, it it doesn't matter. It gives. We're watching movies. We think like things like that. Uh, we have a lot of traditions in our home. Uh, my fourteen-year-old daughter is a, a tradition police, and so therefore she holds <laughs> us accountable to holding to our traditions. And uh, that can be stressful in itself because we have to do everything we've done in the past, and then we always try to add new traditions. So it's similar to a church. That's what we do. We do everything we did in the past. But we got to add new stuff to it. Um, mm-hmm. So in our house, we just treat it, I guess, the same way. And so. Um, but I think I think the biggest thing is what I want to encourage you. I mean, we're already a week into December, so by the time this airs, you know, we're already a week in, a full uh, nine days into Christmas uh, season. And so that being said, almost two weeks into Advent. That being said, if you haven't started planning, I would get out your calendar. I would start marking and planning. Uh, what are those things that are valuable to you in this season? What are those things that are going to fill your cup up and help you to um, remember and celebrate and worship what we're actually celebrating. Christmas is a big deal for uh, for Christians, for Christ followers. This is a big deal. This is the setting of the course. This is God engaging um, in, in, in a way uh, that's going to point us to Easter, which is right around the corner, another busy time uh, for the church. Uh, but it's, it's, it's this right here. This is where God set into motion his, his plan, his ultimate plan to redeem um mankind and i think this is this is a big deal we should uh we should be anticipating excited about christmas um and what it means and and josh in no way shape or form we it was anybody i don't think who knows you thinking you're being a scrooge and uh anti-christian uh, anti-christmas i think more along the lines is is what we want to encourage everyone to do though is enjoy the days leading up to christmas 
just enjoy this process of anticipation of like what it what it really re represents what it re mm -hmm. you know what it means to us and i think if we don't plan to do that it's not going to happen we're going to get caught yeah. up in all the chaos right i think about mm -hmm. back in the day when you used to go shopping on the friday after thanksgiving i don't know if mm -hmm. anybody still does that does anybody in your family do that i don't know if anybody does it um black my friday wife my wife and I just pull out our computer and that's what we that's do. What I, that's what we do. <laughs> All right. So I don't know if anybody does that, but here's the thing. This is what I'm getting at is back. I can remember back faintly when this used to be a thing, you'd get up and you would go shopping. And I would go and we would have Thanksgiving and then all the adults would get around the table and they'd plan out where they're going to go, what they're going to get, right? Because, you know, once it's gone, it's gone, right? It's off the shelf, it's off the shelf. And they'd go and they'd wait in this line because this was the most important spot, this, this, this. And they'd plan it out so they could get everything they, they, they wanted to get out of that day of shopping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I say that to say, I think that that's the idea of planning. If you want to get everything you want to get out of Christmas, you got to plan it. You got to organize it. You got to plan it. Now, be flexible with it. Don't be rigid with it. But you got to plan it. You got to say, hey, this is what I want to get out of it. I, at, at, on Christmas morning, I want to wake up and this is what I want out of this whole season. Yeah. You got you to plan for that. You got to make those intentional steps. And so I'm encouraged because you're saying, hey, we're planning out our, we're going to go look at lights. My wife told me the other day she's got, she's coming up with a plan of how we're going to look at lights. You got nice. family gatherings that you got to add in there. You got all these other things you got to do. But if those things aren't marked off first, they'll be exactly what you just said a minute ago. They'll be eaten up by someone else's events or someone else's agenda. Um, I know I saw on social media, you've already done your staff Christmas party. Mm -hmm. Check mm -hmm. that box, got that out of the way on December, the first week of December. Yeah. Um, I've, we've already done ours at the church I'm serving at currently. We've already right. done our Christmas party as well. So that's done, that's all good, all, all good. And now the real focus is on all those things that are leading up to the Christmas Eve gatherings. So I think you said you had three going, right? Yeah, three. three on three on Saturday. We're doing early services. We're doing like a two o'clock, three thirty, and five since it's a Saturday. So we're doing. We have we have RSVP set up, and it's funny. The first service this has the highest amount of RSVP so far because people want to check that box. They want to get. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. They want to get the granny's out. house. You know what if, I mean? If, I mean, if you're registered, that's for probably that day, what it no is. Shame. Um, <laughs> but I think right. I think for us too, like uh, Cassie's. Honestly, a lot of that has to do with how creative and fun she is. I mean, I love to have fun, but she's really good at creating experiences for our family. And one of the things she's organized the week leading up to East, uh, Easter, Christmas, is is that we're going to go around our neighborhood with some different families in our church, and we're going to do Christmas caroling and we're going to give out candy canes and invite cards to our Christmas services. And so looking at it as a way to connect with people, hang out, have some fun, but also take a moment to let our neighbors and our friends know that they're invited. Um, a lot of people are open to coming to church this time of year. And I, I'm sure, I know you get this Jay, but like people are open a little bit, I think more because of the chaos and the need and, and they might show up with you and sit with you and, and hear the gospel. And, and not only that, be, be able to be, connect with people that truly love them. So, uh, you know, I would look for people in your area, your neighborhood, you know, that you know that are not, that don't have family or, or maybe they're, they don't have anywhere to go on Christmas Eve or Christmas Eve Eve or whenever you have your services. Um, take, take that opportunity to let them know they, that they're valuable and that you, you love them and that they're welcome to come and, and be with your family. I, I've, I've been challenging our church, don't come alone. Don't, don't come to Christmas Eve alone. This is not just a family service. This isn't just about us. This is about also welcoming people uh, into our church that, that, need, that need the love of Jesus. So um, of course they can come along, but I'm just, I'm challenging them to, to think about who can you bring with you. Right, and, and I hear you say again, Cassidy loves candy canes. You're gonna walk around the neighborhood with candy canes. I'm gonna have, I, maybe I'll send you a box of candy canes. That's what yeah. I can do to support you, man. Um, We're a big there's fan. A lot of candy, there's a lot of candy canes going out in your house. You have a, yes. yeah, I, I, yeah. I don't. Um, I think those are all fantastic, fantastic uh, thoughts, especially. And and I heard you also say something very valuable that I think oftentimes we 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 don't give enough credit where it's due is that you have your your partner uh, there alongside of you fighting the good battle of saying, Hey, we're going to make this happen. We're going to do, we're going to do great things and we're going to have fun family experiences. And your bride plays a huge role in that as does my wife, Holly. Um, and, 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 and I think many times that just gets overlooked in some ways and not enough credit is what I'm getting at. Um, and the way it should is like our wives play a huge role 
and helping to create that and, uh, you know, level that out, um, you know, kind of bring some stability to the home, especially when I know for me and for, I, I'm, I'm guessing you, our, our schedules are very hectic and crazy. And so um, shout out to Cassidy and Holly and other like-minded pastor wives who That's right. um, do, all the, do all the hard work that um, often doesn't get talked about. Um, yeah. and, and I think, I think that that's, that's super, super important. Um, so Josh, yes, you have a handful of Christmas Eve gatherings. Um, is your church able to, now you're a portable church. You've been meeting, you're 20 yeah. years old, 20 plus years old. Mm-hmm. You're a portable church. Are you able to meet on Christmas day? Are you meeting on Christmas day? So um, we are not on Christmas day. Cause we're having three that night before. Of course, that has been a huge, uh, discussion oh, on social media. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, that, uh, yeah, I mean. I would just say, <laughs> yeah, I think I do think some people on Twitter would probably call me a uh, a lot of names because we are not meeting Sunday morning. Well, the, the thing about the thing about our church is that when we have Christmas and Easter, we try to we try to be creative with presentation of the whole the whole experience. Not because we need to add anything to the story, but we we really want to make it special for our community for our church. And so we're going to start setting up, cleaning up next Friday at the school we meet at. Uh, getting things prepped, uh, spending about a day and a half just in there, preparing, cleaning. Uh, our team, our staff, our volunteers do such a great job every year. And then, you know, leading up to Christmas Eve, I mean, we're, we're spending the whole day before Christmas Eve uh, finishing lights. We have to rent stuff. We have to put, you know, we put backgrounds up, lights uh, to prepare. So it's, it's three or four days of, of full days of cleaning and working at a portable place that we meet at to prepare for it. Here's why I bring this up because the chaos, <laughs> the chaos of Christmas. No, finally join the chaos of Christmas. You gotta, yeah. You gotta say you're. You gotta. You gotta choose wisely here because not only Josh is it you and your family and your staff, but it's also your volunteers. It's also people who are in your church who are going to give endless hours over the course of that weekend to do all the worship gatherings and things of that sort. And um, this has been a huge, and I've I'm, I've been hurt by the fact of just how much we're we are beating each other up, and and the whole world is watching us just lash at each other because we're, mm-hmm. uh, you know, for some reason, uh, those who are not hosting a service on um, Christmas Day um, are are looked at as less Christian or less spiritual because we're not meeting on um, that Sunday morning. Um, yeah, and 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 I just want to say, last time I checked, I, I'm not sure Sunday morning holds the um, the end all be all to whether or not you're a Christian or not, especially when you're hosting three the day before. Um, I will well, say and, this. Our, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. No, go ahead. No, go ahead, Jay. Well, I, I will say. The, let me add this. Just one last thing. On Monday, the day after Christmas, our staff is going up there to work for probably five six hours to tear everything down. We're, we're actually letting them go home on Christmas Eve to be with their family. And we're going to spend a whole another probably four or five hours uh, cleaning, sending rentals back home. So, you know, it's just people that don't plant churches, I think really don't understand Jay. I think that that's one, that's one other whole side of it. Um, but um, yeah, I, I think it, it's sad when we, when we divide over non-essentials. Well, I think if your church is not meeting at all, Christmas Eve, 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 or Christmas Day and worshiping Jesus, that's the problem. Um, so. Right. There's some legalistic mentality in this this concept as well as that, you know, if you're not meeting on Sunday, then you're not a church or whatever it may be. I will say this. Let me say, uh, we are having a Christmas Day service at the church I'm serving at currently. Uh, I'm not the lead pastor there, um, but they have not, uh, there's not a requirement for any of the staff to be there. The senior pastor who is a um a, you know um well some of his kids live at home but he's close to an empty nester um is going to be really just driving that and it's a communion service and it's mainly for those who don't have family and are going to wake up christmas morning alone and he has a personal and, and again it'll be it'll be well attended mm-hmm. um that's and, great you know maybe i'll take some batches for this my family's not attending uh we're going to be at four services on christmas eve eve and christmas eve there'll be four services uh, my whole family is serving all four, all four of the services, and um, we we just decided as a family, you know what, we we are going to go and we're going to worship and we're going to be there and we're going to celebrate, and on Christmas Day, on Sunday because it falls on Sunday, we're going to do what we normally do as a family. We're not going to go, um, and we decided that. And shame on me, I guess. Uh, that's what I feel like maybe. Uh, but we're hosting one, but 
I, I don't think it's a requirement. Again, you get that legalistic bent to it to where I feel like I'm obligated because it's Sunday um, when I have worshiped all weekend. And uh, again, it's not like I'm checking a box or anything. I, I find joy in doing that, but I also value taking some time at home um, because Josh, I, I don't know what you do. I can only assume what you might do on Christmas morning. On a Christmas morning, um, we're going to wake up as a family and we're going to worship together before we do anything else. Yeah, we're gonna we do. Up, we're going we're gonna to read the Bible. Yeah. We're going to yep. celebrate. We're going to pray. We're going we're gonna to thank God for what it really means. And so we are going to worship on Sunday morning, <laughs> at Christmas mm -hmm. morning, just like we do every other Christmas morning. Um, and we're going to, um, we're just going to do that here at home. So uh, that being said, I say that to say this is the chaos of Christmas. We fall into the mm -hmm. events like, okay, it falls on Sunday this year, which mm -hmm. makes it extra complicated for pastors of going, now what do I do? And, you know, there was, there's, a, please don't cancel Christmas day worship services, even though you're holding four or five the day, the weekend before. Um, now right. there's this pressure from pastors going, well, do I have to, just so I can live into that. I want to encourage you pastors, um, whether you agree with me or disagree with me here, um, uh, you need to pray about this. You need to make a decision that's best for you and your church and your family. If you haven't already made, most of you probably at this point have already made oh, yeah. your decision of what you're doing. Uh, but if you haven't and you're wondering and you're toying and you feel pressured, um, I, I, I just pray you don't fall into that temptation um, to adding to the chaos and you can really pull back and go, okay, this is what I feel like God is telling us to do as a church. Um, honestly, lead your church the way God has called you to specifically lead that church. That's what it's all about is leading your church the way God has called you to lead that church. You're the shepherd, the one God has pointed you there. Um, and um, I do not think um, you are going to be punished uh, for not hosting Christmas Day service if um, if God has told you and freed you not to have to do that. So I just want well, to say that. Also, because I think, I think it's go good to talk about. I do think it's, I'm glad you brought it up. I do think if you can and you feel led to do it, man, I think that's awesome. If, if you do multiple services leading up and you don't that's that's also okay i i, I don't think that's a it's a sinful a uh, decision uh it, it, i on social media it, it definitely feels like that's what's being said um and i at the end of the day if you're spending christmas weekend worshiping jesus inviting people to know him serving pouring out uh that's the key and i uh, don't get don't get side sideways and uh and arguing about some of those things because i'll be honest that's the stuff that stresses me out that overwhelms me well is, you're not alone in that the, i think it's those kind of side of it's sideways energy and and there's certain people on on twitter that that feel that they have a an obligation to correct everybody on non-essential things um and so i think i think wisdom needs to prevail and you know what make much of jesus serve the lord follow his his leading and discernment i met with my elders went over this months and months ago and had a lot of good dialogue and they all felt like it was the right decision. So that's the right decision for our church. That's and right. if, uh, and if someone doesn't like it, that's okay. That's because right. Because by, because last I checked being a leader means that you're not going to make everybody happy. And the only way to make someone happy is to sell ice cream. At least that's what I've heard. That nobody complains at an ice cream shop. Uh, is that's that true? true. I, can, I complain. <laughs> but anyway, listen, ice cream, the side note here, we're going to chase this rabbit for a second. Ice cream is a big deal to the mud family. We like ice cream. We like our ice cream, and uh, we we won't we won't be bitter or ugly, but we will walk out and, and give an honest review of an ice cream shop, without a doubt. Okay, so uh, that 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 illustration kind of fell short there at the end with the whole nobody complains in an ice cream shop. We I one hundred percent will. <laughs> so you know what? what? You mean? You're just always going to get feedback. So might as well. What do you mean? You don't have it, right? You don't have you don't have Jimmy's. Do you know what Jimmy's are? I don't think I have a Jimmy's. No, my kids well, love ice sprinkles. cream. Though. They're sprinkles. Oh. Sprinkles are Jimmy's, oh. but okay. specifically the chocolate ones. Okay. Okay. New England. They're the thing. best. Watch, somebody, somebody's going to bash me and be like, no, that's not really a New England thing. I don't know. When I was in New England, that's what they called them, Jimmy's. It sounds good All to right. me. I like anything like that. So, so anyhow, what I want to encourage you is this, is I want to encourage you as a pastor, as a leader who's leading in the trenches. Uh, to find your time, to plan right now, carve out the time to make sure you're spending time celebrating Christmas. Um, don't get caught up in the chaos and the and the and the craziness uh, of the world around us. Um, Josh, I want to free you. You should just get off Twitter. I told you this from the very beginning. Twitter is going downhill. <laughs> it's not worth your time. It's only old people on Twitter. Uh, that uh, that's my opinion. Uh, so. 
I, I, the only way, the only reason I'm really there is for sports updates, and uh, and then also to share the pastor pod and our church stuff. So really, that's I don't, oh, I, don't I don't, and I don't dialogue with any of these uh, Twitter preachers because uh, they don't listen very well. They, they they're not there for dialogue. It's that's a one sided right. deal. So uh, don't get. I just can't. I just can't even keep going on this because <laughs> there's so many yeah. other things that I want to bring up, like. We should just do a rant episode. I love just, to get you. I can go into episode. all the things. Yeah, just oh, all the things boy. that, you know, but you know what? It's Christmas and that's not what we do at Christmas. We're going to choose joy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, Josh, I love it because uh, I, I know how to push the buttons. As soon as I can find out something. <laughs> yeah, you got me about, going. I'll one. get I'm you like, going. Oh, my gosh. All There's right. Like well, listen. So many things. This is their, This is our Christmas episode to say, hey, listen, go find joy in the midst of the chaos. That's right. Uh, thank you so much for listening in with us each and every week. I hope it's been a joy to you. I hope you uh, can walk away encouraged and we stand here cheering you on uh, at the Pastor Pod. So uh, if we can do anything for you, don't hesitate to reach out. The Pastor Pod at gmail.com is our email address. You can find us on all social media platforms. And we look forward to hanging out with you each and every week. But from Josh and myself, for this week... Have a great weekend ahead of you, and we'll see you back next week.